Scottish Royal Caribbean islands have been flattened by the ferocious winds of Hurricane Irma. Caribbean wind is 225 miles per hour. Now, four hours for the Ripon Pass. I stand free. Officials say the French and Dutch territory of St. Martin has been reduced to rubble. Total devastation. The island of Barbuda has been badly hit. It is now barely habitable, and with the tiny island of Barbuda rendered, in the words of its Prime Minister, barely habitable. <laughs> The island looked as if it had been struck by a nuclear bomb. I mean, it was wiped out. And this is quite, uh, quite worrying, actually. My thoughts and prayers are each and every one of you. Local officials say the storm caused wide-scale destruction. 50% of the roof are blown out. I've got neighbors that do not have houses at all. Nearly all found flood damage, some found total destruction. The roof is off, and everything inside is destroyed. I mean, everything. Corn, corn, let's just see. Corn, mine, all gone. And we have cars flying on wires, we have containers, 60 for containers thrown, six, seven blocks. Flying left and right. Power is out and past the island of St. Martin, which has also been devastated. Uh, same uh, goes in Anguilla, where the hospital, school, and the house uh, assembly have been severely damaged. Up to 60% of the uh, people on, uh, in Barbuda have now been rendered homeless. 90% of people in Barbuda homeless. They're gone. Everyone now is homeless. I want your people to remain home. No one has nowhere to go. You must be very alarmed at the scale of the destruction caused so far by Hurricane Irma. Now the strongest storm ever recorded in the Atlantic by some measures ever in the world. It was like it was sucking us up as we were calling out the back from the door. Oh no, it's so intense that it one has to ask about the scale. Right, and I think it's no joke. We've seen over 185 miles an hour for longer than any other storm anywhere ever on the planet. It's just, it's just been crazy. Irma is now the strongest hurricane to ever plow into the Leeward Island. The authorities in the French island territory of St. Martin say it's been reduced to rubble. Its airport is virtually destroyed. An estimated 6,000 Americans are among those stranded on the island of St. Martin. There is now an operation going on to help the people in St. Martin. You just heard that lady pleading. That's, that's very heartbreaking. And on a macro scale, this is what you're looking at all over the world. So it's something to take very seriously, but it doesn't make a lot of difference. Apart from the structural damage, there are thousands of reports of casualties and fatalities. What prospect is there for help to those who've been devastated? Uh, the, 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 what we experience is like something you see in a horror movie. Hurricane Irma is battering parts of the Caribbean and next is expected to pass just north of Puerto Rico. We are ready and said we've done everything that is humanly possible to be prepared. The storm is now battering Puerto Rico. Or possibly hitting the U.S. mainland, one of the most powerful Atlantic hurricanes ever recorded, 185 mile an hour winds. It's also important to note that we have our Dunkirk. We have to evacuate everyone from the island of Barbuda to Antigua. So a lot of people were sort of trapped along those low-lying coastal areas. Obviously, that's where the resorts are. That's where the main tourism uh, is. I am talking the Virgin Islands, St. Thomas and St. John. But the big, the, the climax will be when it gets, when it hits the mainland, and then it'll be all over. Very soon, it seems, in the United States. From the Storm Center Operations Center, where we continue to monitor the situation with Hurricane Irma. The spokesman for the U.S. National Hurricane Center said this was a storm that could kill anyone that didn't get out of the way. Through Irma, which is heading in this direction, by the way. Knowing that Irma and possibly Jose are, yeah. are on their way to the U.S. mainland. Parts of Florida are being evacuated days ahead of a possible landfall by Irma. Producing, obviously, strong thunderstorm activity, too, along with very heavy rainfall amounts. This is how we expected this to begin, but uh, this is going to be a very long-lasting event. The state of Florida will definitely take a hit from... Typically, of course, Hurricane Irma is what I'm talking about in the U.S. state of Florida. This densely populated peninsula is bracing for a ferocious hit. Florida's densely populated peninsula is bracing for a ferocious hit. Storm surge flowing along the southwest coast is now projected to go as high as 6 to 12 feet above ground. 
Officials are stressing this is a life-threatening situation. A torrential rain. Which is leaving a trail of devastation. And storm surge. Across the region. The track of the storm has shifted to the western coast of the state and a storm surge could reach 15 feet in places. Still extremely dangerous. The National Weather Service warns of likely structural damage to even sturdy buildings with the complete destruction of mobile homes. The head of FEMA says he expects Hurricane Irma to devastate Florida or other parts of the southeastern U.S. So it is dumping large amounts of rainfall. They're out. I've been saying for a long time, one of these days is going to happen and I think this one could be the one. You, you paint the bleakest of bleak pictures. I'm very uh, worried about my safety, my mom's safety. Myself, my wife, my dog, my cat. I'm taking decisions that is a life or death decision, you know? Today is the day to do the right thing for your family. And I have to feel it for this one. This one's gonna be different. I, I want to get some historical context as you. Irma's continuing its path toward mainland Florida. Florida's utility says more than a million homes and businesses are already out of power. Here in Miami, the winds and rain are pretty ferocious and you can see debris flying around. There are already reports of flooding. We're starting to get reports from like Marathon, Florida, and there's a shelter of last resort there. The outside is deeply flooded. Elsewhere, Florida Power and Light said Thursday, the twin reactor Turkey Point plant, which is 20 feet above sea level, lies just south of Miami on the coast, directly in the path of Irma's expected landfall. As it then moved over the waters, it strengthened to a Category 5 again, but... Some of the islands that were hardest hit by Hurricane Irma earlier this week are now being hit again by Hurricane Jose. Jose is bearing down on Barbuda and Anguilla today. In multi-hazards, um, Jose follows... Um, Access to St. Martin and St. Barnes by boat was cut off as Jose turned up 30-foot waves offshore when the airport shut down Friday after being damaged by Irma. Well, we have two major hurricanes, of course. Let's not forget Irma and uh, Jose, and they're almost as powerful as each other. It's a one-in-a-hundred-year storm now becoming a one-in-twenty-year storm or a one-in-ten-year storm. Further north on Florida's Atlantic coast is the twin reactor St. Lucie nuclear plant. Well, um, I... I, I think, you know, South Florida, my, myself included, I think we need to start uh, really thinking about uh, exactly what the other crowd was talking about. For anyone who is writing this out, you are you could be caught off guard. Tell people that they need to get to shelters uh, or they, they need to evacuate. Of course, we have that tornado warning that continues in Key West. Uh, there are obviously still some folks that probably decided to ride this out in Key West, uh, unfortunately, but... We've talked to people in your city who say, way to go. Well, I hate to hear that. I'm going to do everything in my power to convince them that this is a very serious storm. This is a nuclear hurricane. They should leave the beach. They must leave the beach. Everybody, keep your clothes. Stand me on the beach. Most people are just, like, peacefully going on with their lives, but some people who are very sensitive are sort of getting ready for like war situation. Based on what we now know, Florida will have major hurricane impacts with deadly storm surge and life-threatening winds. And look at the size of this storm. It is wider than an entire state and could cause major life-threatening impacts from coast to coast. It's one of that and a lot more after the news. The authorities in the U.S. state of Florida have now told residents throughout southern Florida to head for safety. Good morning, residents in the southern part of the state to leave now. Along with those living further inland in poorer quality housing. That includes those in the southern half of the state, as well as those living inland in substandard housing. People in the southeast are under evacuation orders as Hurricane Irma is expected to make landfall in Florida tomorrow. Residents have been told to leave the most vulnerable areas while they still can. Florida Keys and Miami Beach. But they've the evacuation order may expand as Hurricane Irma, a Category 4 storm with maximum sustained winds of 150 miles an hour, is on a course. Uh, Everyone should prepare to evacuate. And a dad and I'm a grandpa, please go. Tens of thousands of people are on the move in Florida. More than half a million people have been ordered to leave their homes in Florida before Hurricane Irma hit the U.S. state on Sunday. 
More than a half million people in South Florida are under mandatory evacuation orders. A historic evacuation. A report quoting emergency officials said 5.6 million people, quarter of the population, to leave their homes as Hurricane Irma approaches. What we see about these events, like in, in Florida, the entire 6 million plus people have to be evacuated. Nearly 7 million people were ordered to evacuate. More than 50,000 are in shelters. Hundreds of thousands of people who remained in South Florida are in shelters or in hotels on lockdown. Residents are packing storm shelters. There have been traffic jams and petrol shortages as others head north. Police in the Miami and Fort Lauderdale region are also sheltering in place and cannot respond to emergency calls. In Polk County, Florida, the sheriff had tweeted this week, quote, if you go to a shelter for Irma, be advised. Sworn Leos, that's law enforcement officers, will be at every shelter checking ID. And it was, it was scary. In South Florida, freeways jammed with cars Thursday and Friday as officials ordered the evacuation of more than a half million people. There are traffic bottlenecks around the large cities. Petrol stations are running out of fuel. Millions of gallons of gasoline, by the way, on their way to Port Tampa Bay, along with Port Canaveral and Port Everglades. The gas should be heading to local stations, ASAP, we're told. First got in, we went to a gas station where people were making their last minute efforts to get gas, get water. The woman who worked inside that station said actually people were fighting. And people heading north from south of the Bay Area. I want to let you know about a very important traffic situation. It's a little bit north of here, but it's going to affect you if you're headed up towards Georgia or North Florida. Northbound I-75 is now closed. Georgia's governors declared a state of emergency for six coastal counties ahead of Hurricane Irma. States of emergency are also declared in Georgia and North and South Carolina. You are in Pinellas County. Residents in evacuation zone A are under a mandatory evacuation right now. And once again, northbound I-75 just before the Florida Turnpike in Sumner County is closed. On the Georgia coast, causeways to barrier islands are closed because your area is pretty low. So there were chaotic scenes for much of the day at Miami's Airport. You couldn't get a flight anywhere. When they were looking at your storm surge tables, I mean, that's the, probably the biggest threat. As a result of Hurricane Irma in Florida, there are fuel and power shortages as well as long traffic jams as a result of Hurricane Irma in Florida. Major roads have been gridlocked because they're jamming up Atlanta's freeways as they look to escape the impending force of Hurricane Irma. But you're looking at what starts to cause migration. In Atlanta, some 800 flights were canceled at the nation's busiest airport, and the Metropolitan Atlanta Rapid Transit Authority canceled all bus and rail service. Hardware stores were out of gasoline cans, and water was gone or running low in most places. And there were shortages of fuel. Power shortages as well as long traffic jams as residents return to their homes. And they were trapped. So, you know, the government is doing what they can to provide the right information to the right people to say... The president's been monitoring the storm 24-7. And the people of uh, South Florida, the people of the entire state should know we are with you. By basically trying to cover up what they can about... The of the oil lobby, and as the path has shifted, evacuations now have been called all along the Gulf Coast of Florida, all the way up uh, to Tampa Bay, so it's a very significant number of people. That's when people have to get out of the way. And are you living in a, an evacuation zone? Yes, we live uh, just uh, right on the beach, the, the first block, so the direct ocean view. Well, you might be getting a direct view of a hurricane. If there will be anything to see, I yeah, will see. <laughs> and well, why aren't you leaving? I will not leave this time. Martial law will not keep me out of my house again. I'm right with God. God wants me, he knows where I'm at, and he's more than welcome to take me, but I will not be kept off my property again. They're not going anywhere. We're probably safer in our little concrete bunkers, but you know that they're saying if there's floods and things afterwards, they won't be able to come rescue you necessarily. They have a kayak. Oh, 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 oh. They do, a full kayak, it's perfect. Miami police officers and firefighters are evacuating. Irma's forecasted shift to the west now has caused a good deal of confusion for evacuations. Miami has largely emptied out. Some of the residents fleeing South Florida are leaving their pets behind. Tens of thousands are in shelters as the storm prepares to move near Florida's west coast. 
kind of coming out of path, as you said, along this uh, along the western coast of Florida. And Hurricane Irma is moving over the Florida Keys and has shifted for the west, now threatening to hit St. Petersburg head on. The hurricane is expected to cause storm surges on the west coast as high as 15 feet. And then it's going to come up the coast. Um, it'll be going through communities like Naples, Port Myers, all day tomorrow until, until late in the evening. If that storm stays offshore, as it's expected to do now at this point, it's supposed to give glinting blows to uh, Naples and Port Myers before heading right into uh, Tampa. We're talking about a 10 to 15, 15 foot storm surge along much of southwest Florida. So that's from an area from Naples all the way up to Fort Myers and beyond which is going to, a lot of those areas are going to be inundated. And over the past uh, day, we've been seeing evacuees from the Fort Myers and Naples area to the west come over here now, seeking refuge in shelters. So I'm moving here in But Orlando residents weren't taking things so lightly. In a large parking lot, people scraped the last of over 200 tons of sand into bags. There's more than 40 shelters open. A bunch of them are full here. In tweets and on TV, they're warning people this is serious. And I was just sitting there waiting, looking at my chart. And I'm thinking, here it comes, here it comes. And you can hear it. I stepped outside for a while. You can hear it. You can hear it when it was coming. Ooh. I was um, just watching TV. It's just a normal, ordinary Sunday. Just sitting there at the table, just quaking. And suddenly, like, you know, just a roll. And everything would just roar. This news breakout was like appearing on all channels. I was just watching a movie and they were alerting everyone that. When you're not the prosecutor, you're probably going to lose. So I knew it was coming. So I, so I sat at the table and praying. Said, oh, come on, come on, you know, let's get, get through this, get through this. And it got down by Wachula and Arcadia, and it started getting, it started really picking up here, and it was just hollowing, and it was coming in big gusts. And and when it got down to around Bartow, it said Bartow, it said Bartow, and then it came up here, right here, the eye of the hurricane came right over Pope County, hollowing around here. Then it never wobbled, it just came straight right up to here. And that's when it really got, got, it was howling. And I was here during howling. So you packed everything up and left. But I guess the one major thing to learn from this whole thing is, like, uh, my twin sister and I were almost 33 years old, and we've lived in Florida our whole lives, and we've never seen anything like this. And it's just crazy that we never are prepared enough. During and even after the storm, the message from emergency management officials is simple. Yeah, the, uh, the effects of this storm and the impacts are not right now they're coming in waves so it's important to remember that just in case like we would have to you know leave no one from those from our air is so high ground and people are like sort of packing some kind of war pack so people are very shocked about what was happening what we're really saying is that things we were hoping to be around for 16 years may not be around the tropical storm which hit florida and hurricane Irma continues to push in that bringing the range of rain to the states of georgia and south carolina georgia's governor
forces more uh, evaporation from the ocean to fuel the thunderstorms, and they just keep spinning up and spinning up. And this one, because it had a long time to cross the Atlantic, and it was over very, very warm water, and there was no very low wind shear to shear the storm off, and uh, the atmosphere was very moist, there wasn't any dry air, so this storm really took off. What that means in practice is that emergency planners and society have to understand multi-hazard if you like. We have a lot of mayhem in the North American continent. They have wildfires, nor'easters right now in the Northeast, mm -hmm. uh, uh, earthquakes. A magnitude 8.1 quake that hit Mexico overnight occurred within a seismic hotspot in the Pacific where one tectonic plate dives under another. The earthquake was the strongest to hit the region in more than a hundred years. The strongest storms are going to be stronger. Is the months ahead, not just the next couple of weeks where we're trying to sustain relief, but the recovery that's going to be years and years. In the aftermath of Irma, electricity, running water, and communications have been knocked out. A lot of falling trees. Our roofs off in every direction. Branches in the streets. Some people are being stopped at checkpoints. There's looting. Which, you know, it is kind of troubling. Security forces would be increased from two to 3,000 to reinstate order after looting and chaos. So in a sense, the reason it's not surprising that one loses communication in those areas is often the case that that's also an indi indication of a major problems. There's such a low-lying area there, right smack dab in, in the middle of the Florida Strait. And what that brings is what we call storm surge. So that means we have bigger increase, increased risks of, of flooding from rainfall, fresh water flooding, and you saw... Just from, just like a heavy downpour, uh, it'll get anchored more deep. I live on Lake Parker. Uh, this, this, this water of wall that can be just as devastating to property and lives as the wind is. Harvey was causing intensive flooding, not not much from the coastal flooding as much as from the rainfall. And so, so one would expect there is a correlation that cities that are poorer are less prepared and able to put resources to deal with disasters. So, uh, how do you how do you rep, how do you design your infrastructure? How do you design where where you're going to build homes and where people are going to to live? So that when a big storm comes through, I'm really not that worried. Okay, first of all, what a spectacular view! Right. So I can see all the way down to downtown Miami right. and all the um, islands of Miami Beach with the very fancy houses. Um, and it's a, it's a stunning view. But management has informed residents that water is indeed getting into the building. They went to the PA and then said, um, you know, that the police have to come down to the lobby because the lobby is starting to take on water. And from, like, from the wind pressure and the water, you know, getting into under the door. And also that some people on the east side of the building are taking on water also into their, their apartment. Your home is unlivable, now you gotta find somewhere else to live in. But I have electricity and I also have Wi-Fi. Right. So a lot of people are hungry for news and there's a lot of fake news about Irma there. You know, things like Irma's a category six or it's headed directly toward Houston. There are sharks swimming in the freeway. <laughs> there was quite a bit on Facebook and social media, yes. How do people know, you know, what's real? What sources do you recommend? Well, again, the most trusted source that really anyone has is yeah, a storm is going to come along every so often and we're going to have to rebuild and that just is what it is. To try to find a way to make money. We're talking about $15 billion in emergency relief funds just to get people scratching their heads, especially when the bill comes due. That makes a real life threat. Sometimes, people, uh, you know, many people believe it's the biggest threat. Homeowners don't want to know that it, it, with too much uh, precision, it can lead to higher insurance rates. Yes, and by the way, they're well aware that the money that they are um, funneling towards Houston is just a down payment. We have concerns that the rate cost funds don't always go directly to who should get it. We also have concerns that in some countries, some people feel that depending on the parity in power, the Red Cross um, support might only go to party supporters and not to people who are not in that party. The, the governments, the former colonial powers and whatever, either have to put their money into redoing, you know, rebuilding these places, or to expect that 
these citizens, outlying citizens, are going to start making their move across the waters. And saying, well, maybe, yes, here we go, we got a problem. And it also is this sort of cascading failures that can happen when you lose, essentially, uh, when you have flooding that takes out wastewater treatment facilities and disrupts the pipelines and refineries and so forth. These are key assets. That and it is expected that it will take about four months for the entire country, which is 100 miles long but 35 miles wide, to be able to reboot. And so if people don't have like a Richard Branson or some, something to come in and help do this, what's going to happen to those folk? They're going to have to move someplace else. Well, there's a lot of uncertainty, so is there accounting the cost of Hurricane Emma? Not only the hurricane, but also the earthquake. And that's not just local. The refineries for our nation are largely concentrated on the Gulf Coast, so when we have a hit there, it ends up disrupting supply for fuel for the whole rest of the country. And that um, these smaller countries, of course, don't have the resources to, to totally rebuild these places. I think at some parts of the world <clears throat> which are going to be affected so badly by this kind of storm so often, that they become almost impossible to rebuild. This is one of the challenges we're going to see, of course, is that many of the people did not have insurance, and so they will not be able to recover, obviously, as, as capably as we like them, because they simply didn't carry the insurance. Very real, but more broadly, it turns out that nine out of 10 Americans, if they stay put for 30 years, a life of a mortgage, are probably going to be directly impacted by some disaster. A changing tone? It's just the opposite. We cannot afford to, we can't afford not to make these investments, particularly over time. But the other point that you want, one also has to think about is effectively is, is the resources. So in a sense, the international community is focused on the Caribbean because of it being the hurricane season and the events for particular types of events. However, one would also say that um, certain states have strong colonial links and some of them are overseas territories and of course because of that there's a responsibility for certain states not just to play a role because they are protected as part of the United States territories but also commonwealth and dependency links means that one needs champions in the international community with resources who can not just commit themselves but also do it in a physical way with the resources as well. People just saying no, it's, it's weather. I'm going to ask you, just, can you talk a little bit more about the timing? Um, it, 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 do, can you specify a little bit more about the timing? Maybe you can't. I don't know. Well, we, they're, they're pretty good on the tracking on, on, on the Irma. Are we going to drown? In order to avoid meltdowns, both plants must maintain constant power to ensure the cooling off of nuclear fuel rods in their reactors, as well as highly radioactive spent fuel rods kept in storage pools. 100% of the electrical lines will have to be replaced. The pool's portable water apparatus will have to be built from scratch. This latest state of emergency comes as the residents of Texas and Louisiana are just beginning to pick up the pieces. You've probably seen photos, as I have, over the past few weeks. We have seen images that really just look uh, horrendous out of there. After the destruction wrought by Hurricane Harvey, angry islanders left without food, water, or electricity have been critical of their government's handling of the storm. We're French. I don't know what that's going to mean, but we wish the best of luck to you. St. Martin was one hard-hit island in the Caribbean. Officials say many homes are destroyed, water and power are also up to much of the island. Everything uh, out, of, out of work. Uh, we're facing now, uh, we have to get our, our, our medical people into Barbuda to ensure that the health issues are dealt with. Gotcha. You have number, uh, some dead animals, a lot of water. You're going to have a lot of mosquitoes breeding. As a matter of fact, they've already started. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and just to emphasize, police stations, fire stations, damage, roofs gone, the council halls, bakeries, fishing vessels, the few hotels in Bakura all suffered significant structure damage or destroyed. Right. Ninety-five percent of the buildings on the island have been damaged. Their police uh, station has suffered roof damage. His airport almost entirely destroyed. So has our courthouse. The country's housing staff has been damaged. So has our prison. A number of them totally demolished. And so just in terms of essential services alone, we are clearly in a limping position. Before the hurricane force winds began, 
we were already, the roof had already gone to our premises and we had to go for shelter. Our leader showed a desolate flooded landscape. Or anyway, up to 12 feet above, above uh, sea level. I've never seen it. Nothing like this. It's shorn of trees and littered with debris. My whole house came then. It was seven of us. And all we had to do was to pray and call for help. Winds of over 200 kilometers an hour swept over the island, not once, but twice. That, that's a couple of big hits. People are trying to get folks off the island. Troops from Holland are being sent to the former Dutch colony of St. Martin. The Dutch Ministry of Defense says the troops will also help restore order. The Pentagon has deployed six U.S. Navy ships to the Caribbean to support response efforts. Britain and France are also sending warships and military aircraft. Adar has been working on an evacuation schedule out of Crown Bay, where uh, owners of boats that were not hurt. Is say Puerto Rico are bringing their boats and taking women and children to Puerto Rico. Yeah.